Um, and once again, instead of um, instead of having this one down, uh, we will actually have both of these. I think we will have both of these. No, we'll do. Uh, we'll use the green one for argument E. Wait, that's not going to reach, is it? Damn it! I really should add repeaters. I hate adding repeaters. It's so tedious, but I um. I always leave it till the end, such a procrastinator. Right, okay, so as you can see this time, now that the red and the green are down, it's not coming on the bottom, it's not coming on the second one, it's coming out of this one here now. So, uh, this one will actually be bust all the way around here, and it will be bust over the top of the inputs to the general purpose registers, so it will just be bust to here, and um, it'll just be written into whatever is coming through on the A argument. Not too, um, not too tricky really. Alright, three left. I think the last three are probably the hardest three to understand. And um, you may be wondering when we have such a small amount of instructions, and that's because I wanted um, a 16-bit instruction set, and that being 16 bits across here. And um, that means you're quite limited to the amount of instructions you can have um, with a four. With so you only get four bits for the opcodes, which means that you're limited to the amount of uh, operations you can do. Obviously, you're limited to sixteen, uh, 15, yeah, sixteen, because that's the uh, the highest number four-bit binary can go up to if you include zero. So I had to think of a way of including all the necessary functions of a of a computer into just sixteen instructions. Obviously, I probably could have done without some of these redundant instructions, like I could have got rid of not sub, um, and I could probably have got rid of a couple more, which you don't really need. Like you can do various logical functions just by combining uh, nor and and, I think, or and and or. No, 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 that's not it. Anyway, but you can combine um, various logic functions to make more logic functions. Anyway, back to the thing. Right, this is CMP, standing for compare. And if you have a look down here, we're um, we're making good progress of the things that we've built. We've done all the RAM and pretty much everything here. We're on the ROM now here. But what we haven't done is build this comparator. And the comparator is very very important as it allows us to do branching and conditional branching. <clears throat> so if you think the computer without conditional branching will just cycle through each line one at a time. So it'll do this line, then this line, and then this line, and then this line, and so on and so on. But in um, in real life computing, you want statements such as if. So if something happens, do this. Else, do something else. And that is um, what the com the comparator allows. So it allows conditional branching. So say if we're on line here, on this line and then something happens and we then want to skip back to here and then continue again as if nothing happened we need to be able to branch from one place to another so um, that is what branching does <coughs> and that is first carried out by a compare instruction so all that's going to do is um, oh gosh, I haven't actually explained that yet. So all this is going to do is just take the two ALU inputs and compare them. And you may be wondering how is it going to compare them? But it's going to compare them um, using these things here. So it's going to say if either they're equal, they're not equal, A is greater than B, A is less than B, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, are exactly equal to. So they are the basic comparisons. That comparison is then going to be stored in a register which I haven't actually built yet called a compare flags register. Um, so the two arguments in this case are just simply A and B and they are just simply read from, um, read from here. Now I think I was stupid enough not to, um, wait, for these two? I um this I um I was stupid and I didn't actually realise what I was doing. So for this instruction, say we have um, whatever the compare opcode is coming through here, we actually want the A not to be written to but to be read from. So I'm gonna have to create a way of 
um, taking this value which is actually going into the right and then just taking it down one and making it go into the read or actually thinking of a better way of doing that I could simply yes I'll do this actually ignore that ignore what I just said about changing all that around I'll simply do B and then I'll do C simple no I don't need to change anything so this instruction will just use the same basic instruction format as the A, B and C except there is no A this time because we're not writing anything we're simply comparing two values read from the registers which are B and C okay so that's compare done now we have branch um, wait why is there G why is there G there oh yeah I remember right, okay <coughs> so this is probably the second hardest instruction to understand um, it is the branch function and what that does is based on a condition which is G this will branch or jump to line F of ROM so if you imagine um, F in this case again which is like the two B and C arguments combined F imagine that was I don't know 24 that would if the um, if like the condition is true this will branch to line 24 of ROM so I don't know that's somewhere around here because this is 32 lines okay but now we also have that weird G function G argument should I say and that is the compare um, that is like the, the comparison or the the logic test so <laughs> we have the compare here and let's say that after the compare function it turned out that B and C were equal so um, the fact that they're equal is now stored in the compare flags register now in our branch we want to say if these two things are not equal branch so in the G which is here we specify that we want to test if they're not equal so we put we would put 0 0 1 0 and then we would say branch to whatever value this is here the computer would then go and have a look and see if whatever she uh, whatever the user has said here so in this case is um, they specified not equal and check that that is the same as what is stored in the compare flags if it is the same the branch will happen but if it isn't the same the case um, which is uh, the case in this scenario because it turned out that they were equal and we're specifying not equal so it won't do anything and it'll just continue cycling um, and you may be thinking that's really confusing but it's really not it's just a simple AND gate so if um, I don't know the register the let's have a look um, is it an AND gate or is it an XR? I'm not sure it's not it's not too hard to do <laughs> just comparison but say if the flags held I don't know this value and that meant that they were equal and the user specified that value and that was um, she wants to test for not equal we just compare them and obviously in this case um, they're not the same so that's uh, really not too difficult to do right then so that's a uh, that's branch and now the complex one the really complex one All right this is a genre also known as Jim, uh, Jim, <laughs> jump and link register. Okay, rather confusing, I know. So what this does, it does an unconditional jump. So it, there's no conditional. There's no bothered using any comparisons, any branching. It simply jumps to whatever value has been specified um, as the f, um, the f argument. So again, if you want to recap what the F argument would be, in this case, it's simply the combined B and the C, except we would have not only that one and that one on, we would also have this one on to specify that this is the F, and as you can see, it's not coming out here, not out here, not out here, but it's actually coming out of here now, and then this value will be bussed to the, um, the program counter which handles 
um, the counting of going on over and over. So if you load whatever value is coming out of there into the program counter, that will make um, whatever value that is be like the line that is used in ROM. So say that was 24 coming out of that value, it would effectively jump to line 24 in the ROM. Again, the program counter is not hard to uh, implement. It is simply just a binary counter that counts over, like just increments by one each time, just in binary instead of decimal. And it also has just a little input where you can obviously load different values into it. <coughs> okay, so that's um, that was the F value. So it's just a con an unconditional jump to F. But then we have that and jump and link register. So what we want to do is link the register. Um, this is used for something quite complex called uh, return addresses. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. If anyone's done any programming before, not as in like high level programming, as in quite low level programming in terms of machine code, you can learn that when you jump to a different part of code you have to save a return address All right so say you're on um line three in code and you want to jump to line 10 uh whatever 10 is that's not 10 uh no and oh if imagine that's one so two four eight if you want to jump to 10 um you first have to save this return address so you'd have to save, wait that was meant to be three, anyway, so you'd have to save three in a register, you then have to jump to ten, and when you'd finished executing any code that's at ten, you'd load whatever value has been stored um, when you saved it into the program counter, and then you'd continue um, executing from there. I know that's probably a pretty lousy explanation, but it's, uh, it's the best I could do. Basically, you store the value where you have jumped from, so you have a return point when you want to come back to executing from that code. It's used for functions. Um, it's basically how functions work. Um, that and things called stacks and stack frames and all that, but that's pretty advanced stuff that you don't really need to know. Okay, so what this does is it jumps unconditionally to F, and then it sets the value of the program counter minus one. It takes that value and stores it in um, whatever value you've set for A. So it writes it into a register. And now you're maybe thinking, um, that's a bit confusing. Why is it PC minus one? Um, and that's because when it's actually on this instruction wait is it should it be pc or should it be pc minus one anyway it'll take whatever that let's just imagine that's pc not pc minus one it'll take whatever value stored in the program counter so basically it will um if one line seven seven will be stored in the program counter so it'll take seven and store that in a register it will then jump to um f in uh, wherever F is, it will continue executing there, and then you might want to return back to where you were executing before, like I was saying with the uh, like the return address. So then you'd load whatever is in A into the program counter and continue executing there. So that's basically what that's used for. It's um, it's quite an advanced function for such like a, a small machine, but it really does expand um, like expand the the use of this computer. It, um, obviously, it's a lot more. Um, oops, filter keys, sticky keys. Even. It's a uh, it's a lot more advanced than this ba the basic computer I did, um, but that means it's a lot more realistic. So yeah, that's it for the instruction set and the ROM. <laughs> Probably a long video of me just talking, but hopefully you've stuck it through and um, you've understood most of it. So basically all this does, this contraption here, is just um, route various bits of um, instruction to different parts of the computer. That's what the instruction decoder does. Um, 
Oh wait, I forgot one thing. Damn it. I uh, realised I forgot one thing. And that is that pes pesky G in uh, that G argument. So if we go back to compare. Wait, was it compare? No, it's branch, sorry. Um, we specify the condition we want to test for as this G argument. And obviously this G is in the place of the A. So if we have a look up here. Oh wait, I've just realised I've been stupid and I've uh, I've built this on the wrong one. Oops. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, just for the time being, imagine that this first four here wasn't the ALU opcode. It was actually the um, the A argument. So instead of um, the value going along here, we would instead of the value coming like out of here and then along there somewhere is actually going to get taken by these torches down to here to these four lines here and then this um, blue line here controls whether or not this value is being used so if I just get a uh, lever real quick um, as you can see, now the value is coming through here. <coughs> Wait, if I actually need some more torches. Damn it, why do I get rid of my torches? Right, okay. So, as you can see, the value is now coming through here. And then when we flick this off, it's not coming through here. And then this will go to the comparator. Um, and this is basically just a binary representation of the um, the comparison that we're checking for so as at the moment what value was that that was um, uh, 0 1 0 1 uh, wait yeah I think it was that reading from right to left um, and then we go down to G we have a look and 0 1 0 1 will check if A is greater than or equal to B so um, yeah, that's basically what that does. Obvious, but I've just realised that I actually need to build this little contraption here on um, on these four values, on these four lines, not these four, because this is the opcode, and this is argument A. Right, so that's it. We've covered some pretty advanced stuff in this video, and I know we haven't built anything, but like I said, I will put world download in with this corrected, because that's wrong. Um, so I'll put world download in the description. I know, I don't know actually, <laughs> I have no idea if anyone actually likes building along with me. Um, if you don't, I'm not fussed. Um, so you can have the world download. If you do like building along with me, sorry you won't get to see me building this. I did explain where most of the buses actually lead to, so you could probably rebuild this yourself. All this, um, this little contraption here is, is really just a muxer. So by default it goes down here. If you turn on the piston, it then breaks that and it goes up here instead. And then if you turn that one on, uh, turn that piston on, it goes up here. And finally, it goes up there. That's really not too hard to build. Um, just a basic mux or demux. Can't remember which way around that is. Um, so yeah, I'm stalling and I really need to end this video. It's been very long. Um, so yeah, I will also include this instruction set so you can have a look at yourself. I create this instruction set myself, it's based on um, fairly standard ones which are used in Minecraft by Minecraft R, even though I don't play on Minecraft R anymore sadly. Um, I just don't have the time, hopefully I will do in the summer. But yeah, thanks for watching everybody and in the next video we will be actually building the ROM itself and building the program counter I think and the decoder for that. So yeah look forward to that and I'm sorry it's been so long since the last video before this one was uploaded but uh, yeah stuff happens and I'm very busy at the moment so yeah thanks for watching again see you later